We're just outside Zurich in Switzerland today to visit the offices of Ublox, the global provider of positioning and wireless communication technologies to consumer, industrial and automotive markets. We're here to get a glimpse into the future as we talk about what to expect in the next few years with smart cities, autonomous driving and drones. I'm Sarah Lockett. Welcome to the Business Debate. With me now is Daniel Aman, who's Executive Vice President for Product Center Positioning and also one of the co-founders of Ublox. Welcome to the Business Debate. Thanks for having me. And so you say that very soon we're going to move from 2D autonomous driving to 3D. Now, what does that mean? Autonomous cars uh, will be around starting 2020 uh, and they will evolve in terms of functionality. Uh, one of the things that they will allow is that we make better use of the streets because they can move closer and at higher speeds as they're fully machine controlled. However, with the continued trends for uh, mobility and urbanization, uh, there is a limit to the bandwidth a street can carry. So the obvious way out is we take the three, third dimension into account. So we're talking flying robot taxis of some sort in the airspace between zero and a few hundred meters. And what can we expect to see in the smart city of the future? What will it be like? Take your average uh, science fiction movie, take away the dystopian parts of it, and you get a pretty good picture of how it could be looking like. So you'd be having all sorts of systems on the ground and in the air uh, doing their tasks at the service of the inhabitants of such a city. That's a pretty good uh, view on how things could happen. So imagine a patrol of drones uh, flying up and down the skyscrapers, cleaning them fully automatic and going from building to building. And, and what needs to happen on regulation, do you think? Because on the ground there's quite a lot of regulation for traffic and in the air there is, but in this sort of gap below 300 metres there isn't very much, is there? Yes, that's basically a green field and that's a good thing as we move into fully automatic flying objects doing their tasks. Uh, the rules that we do have on the streets where people need to adhere to, uh, they don't apply in the airspace as there it's all machine driven. So uh, this can, from day one, this can be a fully automatic rule sets which are implemented in those objects. They can be updated as new use cases happen uh, and modified accordingly. And what's your part in all of this? What does Ublox supply to the industry? Yes, so we are supplying the, the base technologies which empower such use cases. So things like communications, sensing and also positioning of those devices in the 3D space. How much more accurate do positioning receivers need to get and how easy is this to do? Because we all know the instance, don't we, when our mobile phone is telling us that we're in one place and we know we're somewhere different. Well, the basic technologies to determine your position, centimeter level, is already available. Our F9 generation that we have, this already can do that. The important aspect is not so much the accuracy, but it's the integrity of that position information. So the moment uh, the device tells that it is the latitude and the longitude, it needs to also give a certain measure of uncertainty that it attaches to that. This allows then the surrounding system, say the drone, to know whether this sensor can be trusted. And how do you think we're going to solve the problem of who is responsible when an autonomous car causes an accident? That's something the lawmakers need to get their heads around. And the classical example is if two autonomous vehicles somewhere down the road, if they collide, who is ultimately responsible? Is it the owner of the vehicle? Is it the operator of the street? Or is it the, the manufacturer of the vehicle or its suppliers? So that's something that needs to be solved in the future to come. So the lawyers are going to be kept busy? Absolutely. How do you think we're going to solve the problem of society, people, accepting drones, unmanned vehicles and so on? As with all new technology, initially this causes fears, uh, this causes doubts on the technology and there will, no doubt, there will be uh, a learning curve that the industry needs to go through. So we need to, need to take it step by step and eventually after this initial learning curve is through, then the benefits of those technologies which are in a way obvious, uh, will come to light, not only by statistics, but also uh, in every day, everybody's life. And if we don't move to greater automation, with so many people moving into cities, what is life going to be like if we don't accept all of these things? Well, a city by definition is a confined space. So with urbanization and more mobility, 
there is a natural limit to that. So the only solution is to use technology uh, to solve that. If we don't, then we will have very crowded, very uncontrolled city environments, which are no fun to live in. Daniel, really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you.